Hello, everyone. Um, welcome back to the next installation of the RUPL Manager interviews. Uh, I am Ming549, and today I am here with Evigaro and Oathkeeper, both managers for the Toxic Chains in this year's iteration of RUPL. Um, how are y'all doing today? Hello, I'm Evigaro, and uh, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Hello, hello, Oathkeeper here, and I'm doing great as well. Thanks. All right, cool. Let's just jump right into it. Um, had some technical difficulties. Uh, so thank you, too, again, for uh, just putting up with that. But getting right into it. Um, firstly, uh, I was just wondering, uh, for both of you, how did you kind of get into the whole Smogon scene and specifically the RU community? Oh, how would you, you should start because mine is quite long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Well, I originally signed up for Smogon, I think, way back in, I want to say it was 20... Actually, I can probably check right now since I'm on, <laughs> since I'm on the site. Um, I signed up way back, oh my gosh, March of 2011. And at that point, it was more of like a, oh, okay, you know, it's Pokemon related. You know, let me just, you know, sign up. You know, maybe I'll glance here and there. But I would say... A few years after that is when I really started taking competitive Pokemon more, I don't, I guess seriously is the word I would use, like more as like a, like a hobby, something I wanted to invest in. And at the time, I wasn't really, you know, dedicated to, you know, one tier or another. I was kind of hopping all over the place, uh, you know, PU, NU, stuff like that. And... I would say recently, I'd say maybe as of a couple of years, um, I've been more of an RU and NU uh, person. Um, there was, you know, I mean, I don't know what attracted me to the tiers, but they just, they, they were fun. You know, the community was fun, and I liked, you know, the mons that were there, and, you know, I, it just, it just kind of stuck with me, and, um, you know, as of right now, you know, I'm, I don't want to say I'm a well-established member of the RU community, but at the very least, the NU community, but um, RU is definitely like that one that I'm, I wouldn't want to, you know, forget about. I, I love the RU community and everyone in it, so, and, you know, this is, uh, this is the second, second year? Yeah, second year yeah. that I'm managing for uh, RUPL, at least, and uh, the second time with Evie. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I started on Small Gun. Well, I knew of uh, competitive before, but I started on Small Gun in 2015 um, during RAS. So I kind of just, you know, said, you know what, I, I'm just going to play this because it's, it's free and it sounds kind of fun. I, I used to watch a lot of YouTube back in, at that time. So I started in OU like everyone, but I didn't really know what I was doing. So I kind of upped around every tier. And I, I liked UU a bit. I thought I was better at it. And I I didn't get the RU ladder, like at all. So that was that was weird at first, but I just kind of stopped persevering to RU because of that. And this, anyone who remembers the RAS or your ladder though knows that it was particularly awful. <laughs> so it wasn't really a, a, a non common sentiment. But yeah, so I started playing more, I started building. There was also a lot of things happening in Aria at the time because um, when I started, it was just decided that Megas and the base forms of Pokemon was going to be tiered separately. So all stuff like Die and see that was OU. Um, Venusaur, that was OU, Blastoise, the UU, they all started dropping. So there was a lot of action that ended up sticking to RU, and like everyone who has played Auras, you know, so Venusaur is so over centralizing. At the time, it wasn't, though. But yeah, so I just stuck playing it. I started playing room tours. I started talk talking to people in the community, people like uh, Mr. Aldo, Ian X, and uh, a4 actually was who is on our team this year. Yep. So yeah, and then over the years I just stuck to RU. I made the move to SM where I played 
the tier almost exclusively when it was main gen, when main gen, sorry, it changed after, but not during. And I became a RUTL in 2019 during SM, and I've been since almost five years now. Yeah, it's been, so it's been a while, yeah. It's been way too long, but let's not go for <laughs> that yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's been uh, great to kind of hear both of your backgrounds with the tier, and uh, just like, you know, I didn't realize both of you were so well-established, have been doing this for so long, so. I mean, it's always cool to hear about that and like just how things have yeah. progressed through various generations. Um, but hopping uh, right into kind of some draft questions. Uh, so recently, we had the RUPL option, RUPL draft, um, and the uh, Toxic Chains put together a team. Um, give me some thoughts about how you think the draft went, and then you know some of the people maybe you were like going for, what some of the strategy behind that was, and uh, yeah, just like draft thoughts overall. Yes. Um, so there was, I'd say overall, we did, you know, very, very well, um, even with the, you know, the deficit of getting, um, you know, uh, Evie right out the gate as, you know, a self buy. And I mean, there early talks, uh, me and her were deciding, okay, you know, do we want to go after Mace or IFO? But, I mean, there's no way we're going to get both. And, you know, as, you know, the auction has, you know, revealed, we did get both. And, yeah. you know, we do we do have a spot for both of them. Um, and then there were definitely times or definitely players that we, you know, more or less wanted to go after, uh, but their price, you know, just ended up being too high. And... It's, you know, we had to consider, you know, other uh, spots, other starters, you know, bench players, stuff like that. Um, Evie, I'm not sure if we want to go into that, even with the auction yeah. being over, but um, yeah. yeah, there, but there was, yeah, there were, I'd say overall, I felt the auction went very well. Maybe, you know, a hiccup here and there, which I'm sure you're going to ask about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but at least in my opinion, yeah, there, it, it went well, at least from my perspective. Yeah, I, I will say that I was a little bit surprised that like our average SV player is quite expensive uh, in comparison to what we'd expect probably. Um, we like it was pretty clear from like day one that Sword and Shield was what we were gonna spend the most on, and it was true. So um, uh, the, yeah, that yeah, and, yeah, that and Oros, yeah. I would yeah. Say. Yeah, yeah, yeah or, or us as well. Or us as well. It, it depended on what I was gonna play. We weren't totally sure until like pretty much day of the auction when we settled on BO3 for the at least for the beginning. But yeah, when we got a uh, Mace and I flew, I was like, okay, that's great. So that was kind of the core that we wanted. Uh, Mace because he plays a gem that's a little tricky. I will say very tricky, honestly. And a foes like a. Uh, a great veteran at those old gen, like uh, the Sword and Shield SM RS, like trilogy, I would say. Um, so at that point, that kind of settled the team well. And then we just said, okay, well, there's, well, there's a lot of money to go in uh, Scarlet Violet now, especially after we got Crossbow for 5k. So it's like, okay, well, SM settled as well. So we just went after players that. Um, we, we really wanted, like, we really wanted Ziri, we really wanted Stretch, well, Stretch was, like, the, that was the D of the auction when I noticed his name and I just told the keeper, that, that, that dude's really, really good, like, we need to really consider him. Like, I didn't see his name before, and I'm like, oh, what the hell, he signed up? Okay, yeah, we, we gotta go. And Finn as well, we really wanted Finn just for building, it, getting the team together, like Finn's been in RU for almost as long as for as longer than me actually, and we we started managing RUPL around the same time, so we know what this tour is all about. So honestly, as far as the auction went, I think there's not a single thing I will really change about it. Well, there's one, <laughs> but it's not an uh, a criticism of the player we got because I think he's really good as well. And I think, yeah. yeah, and I think I know which player you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but I don't want to single him out necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
because again, he's a good player, and it's not that we got him. That's that really got me at the during the draft. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, so you, Othieper, mentioned a couple uh, draft hiccups, and you know, just as someone who was also commentating over that draft, I, I can remember, uh, like, I think Evie upfitting you by like one k or something, like early on in the draft, and then obviously as part of like your last, your second to last pick, seven k right off the bat. <laughs> And that left you with... Yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say, elephant in the room. Just go ahead and bring it up. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, let talk us through that. So so what exactly was going through your mind when you're like, okay, it's time to drop 7K right off the bat? Yeah, okay. So okay. So I saw who was not. It was it was dead in, in case anybody was, you know, didn't want to, you know, go through the whole draft log. It was Devin. Uh, Devin's actually... Uh, he's, as far as, you know, tour players go, he's actually a very, very solid player. And I'm sure anybody who plays tours can attest to that. So he, I saw him and I'm like, okay, he's a friend of mine. It'd be, I mean, he signed up for black and white. We needed black and white. So I'm thinking, okay, let's see how this goes for a little bit. And then, um, the person who nommed him, you know, they had the 3K, you know, right there out the gate. Nothing they can do about that. So I'm thinking, okay, what do we, you know, I'm looking at what we have, what we can spend. And I think uh, I think we had, what, 10K left to use or something like that? And we yeah, could it's 10K. 10K spend, for two players. Yeah, we yeah. can spend at most uh, 7K on one person to guarantee that we have you know, enough spots for everybody. So I'm thinking, okay, I see, I see, you know, the position we need to fill. I see someone I know who's a proven tour player. So I'm like, okay, dot seven, enter. And then I'm like, it, 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 it was strictly impulse. It was strictly impulse. I see, I, I saw a need we had that we need, or like a spot we needed to fill. And I saw a player who knows what he's doing. And I just, I went for it. And then as soon as, you know, Evie said something, I'm, and she's like, no, she's like, no, no, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, crap, we could have, you know, added a couple of more players. I mean, if anything, I should have gone for like 4K or something like that instead of, yeah. you know, the maximum seven. So it was merely like an impulse, you know, bid. And, I mean, while it did work in our favor, we definitely could have gotten at least two more people after that and yeah yeah and that's that's 100 percent on me yeah and and again devin is someone i i had in a snake draft like back in the days it was snake so again not someone i don't trust to be competent at the game at all but yeah 4k probably would have gotten him uh, on the upbidding at first okay so uh, uh, yeah, I can see the point, but personally, at the beginning of a draft, usually I'll assign a value to a player and be like, I don't care if I pay that. For example, Maze, like, he was 6k until I went, nah, screw that, I want to go 18k, and maybe I could have gotten him for 14, the way the draft went. But I genuinely thought, like, if I do that, I get him, most likely, or someone is going to start a bidding and maybe someone else goes and I'm like, okay, well, that's a lot. We can't pay that. But, you know, it's kind of like, boom, the statement's done. That's the value I, I think he has. I don't care what happens after. Same with crossbow. Like crossbow for 5K to me is like 1K more, 1K less. I, I genuinely don't care at this point. The thing was maybe... Crossbow was, crossbow yeah. Still. yeah, the thing at the end though is like, because for me, it's more important to sort of stick the landing when it comes to a draft. That's usually how, why I I wait around with some 10K, 12K, something like that to actually like finish the team the way I see it finished. So that's why at the end, the credits tend to bother me more because Mace at 18, Crossbot 5 changed absolutely nothing to how the draft was gonna end. And there were two players on our list. So was Devin again, so it's not like a massive issue. But when you consider how so many players went undrafted, and that's been a tall scenario, and for good reason, having one less player on a roster kind of feels like a slight missed opportunity. 
But again, very satisfied with everyone we have, and I don't think we're missing out exactly on anything. No, okay. not at all. Yeah, not at all. Like I feel like, I mean, the the seven K was like a low risk, high reward kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Like it's, I mean, like I said, he's a proven tour player, and what you know, whether he does good, whether he does bad. I mean, if he does bad, then I mean that's a hundred percent on me, and I will assume one hundred hundred percent hundred percent responsibility for you know that seven K, which you know, could have been invested in, at the very least, two more people. Yeah, I mean, you know, th this is obviously, we're, we're talking, like, way in the future now. Like, this is before week one has even gone live. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, the, that was certainly, you know, just from a casting point of view, um, you know, the draft has gone, was going more or less pretty smoothly, and suddenly we just have, boom. 7k off of three like, like this was at the point where people were like going for the 3k buys or like a 3.5 or four um and to yeah. just see seven pop up you know that <laughs> i mean that was just a really great way to a, a great way that draft kind of gotten uh got shaken up i guess and you know it was it was just a great moment i think for everybody involved um yeah. but yeah speaking of uh the matchups uh we do in fact know what the matchups are for well, well the rest of the season um, but focusing in on week one, uh, what are kind of some of your thoughts going into the week? Um, are there any matchups you two are personally excited for? Um, anyone you're excited to see play? Uh, yeah, they, go for it. Like, are, we talk, are we talking just our team? or? Uh, yeah, well, with your team specifically, um, your matchup. Uh, and then if you want to, like, you know, if there's someone else that you feel is worth mentioning, then absolutely just go for it. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, so, yeah, we got the Tenacious Technicians first, I believe, if I saw the, you know, the schedule correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think the one, I mean, there's, I mean, they have both Floss and Franklin as, uh, as players, both of the managers are playing. So, I mean, that right there is going to tell me, okay, our SV, our SV players, they, they're going to need to bring, you know, some, you know, grade A teams. If I mean, it, I mean, there's no, there's no avoiding it. These guys know how to play. These guys know how to pile the teams really well. So who, uh, our SV starters, I mean, they're going to need to be ready. You know, avoid those. You know, early mistakes that would get them into a that would dig themselves an early hole. Um, yeah, ODR is probably going to be not even probably he's definitely going to be <laughs> starting in the sun and moon slot and. Uh, he played for us last year, actually did really well. So, um, same same idea. I mean, whoever, I mean, Crossbow is probably going to end up playing Sun and Moon for us, so we got to make sure he's, you know, ready to go. And then, I mean, everybody else on the team, I mean, looks pretty solid. It's uh, it's just a matter of, you know, prepping the right teams and just catching them off guard, perhaps, you know? I'm going to be super boring here, um, but I I genuinely don't care much because like for for those PL the main issue that can arise is your own activity. That that's always the case. That's always the one thing that makes you win or make you lose. And if you don't pre if you don't really care, um, if you don't you know come in with like actually having done something, which honestly I've been guilty to in the, of in the past, sorry. but it doesn't really matter the matchup. Like, sometimes, yeah, sure, you get better players versus, but eh, I think ultimately what I want most is that we get a good attitude because, uh, and we build and we prep and we actually have some fun. And then the matchups, whoever you play, that's not something that I'm really that concerned with. Um, my my best teams usually like when I've when I have managed, I've followed this principle. Like it's like, oh, it's new week. Okay, what are we do What are we doing this week? Like, what seems fun? Sure, you'll scout a bit. Then you'll you'll like, oh, this sounds really funny against them. We should try to talk about it and use it. But like one player, one matchup. Uh, where when anyone can beat anyone. Like, it's Pokemon. Like, <laughs> this game is very weird <laughs> anyway, yeah. so... Uh, um, 
One thing about I will say about this specific match to shot though is I'm quite glad this is week one because like uh I don't want Ishta to, to lose on the season too badly. I want her to do very well. So it's like okay, well it's week one. Like it's the week we're all testing things out. So it's like okay, well I hope she does well. I hope her team does well. And usually that's how I do. Like I look at oh, who I think is really a good friend of mine on the team. And then I'm like, Yay, okay, I hope they do well. Okay, cool. And I hope we do well first, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um and that's actually yeah. You know, somewhat of a convenient transition into the next question, which is uh, kind of looking at the other teams. Uh, what are you? How do you all think uh, draft turned out for them? Um, just the kind of like their overall strength. Who are you keeping your eyes on as the season progresses? And yeah, just just like that. How how would you rate some of the other drafts that happened? Well, I think the one thing that caught my eye was the fact that. Um, the Gar- Noble Guardians, like they, they, I mean, Umbri, they, I mean, they retained Umbri for a huge amount. I think it was like twenty five and a half or twenty six and a half k, and I'm like, okay, that's like that, that's like a quarter of your, at least a quarter of your credits, like right there. And then I, I don't want to, you know, talk down on anybody, um, but if I don't know, it kind of feels like, you know, the Guardians just kind of, you know, waited until, you know, you know, everyone else, you know, got bought. I mean, not to say that they have a bad team. I mean, I mean, they clearly have a very good team. I'm, it just, I don't know. It, I mean, you, I'm, I'm someone who's high on, you know, retaining that right person, but maybe not for that much. So, I mean, overall, I think everyone did you know, very well, just by looking at all the teams. Uh, I think um, what's been interesting about the, this auction is you can look at, like, literally every team and they look like the managers that picked them. Like, you could have started the draft given, a like, a reasonably good guess and you would have gotten those teams which i think is really interesting and also means that not a a lot of them got sniped really badly um because like like the ajnas honestly you would have shown me this team before and i would have been like yeah that's that sounds like an ajna team same with beraldo uh expulso literally everyone so it's hard to gauge exactly how it's gonna work because it's this RPL honestly sounds like jerks fighting each other for seven weeks and I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's um, certainly we made uh, some comments too during the broadcast where it's like, you know, Evie has a very specific type of of Evie pick, um, and I'm sure you yeah. can say like more about that. But looking at the team, you're like, yeah, yeah, she, she got you know the Evie picks. Oh, totally. No, no. I mean, uh, Ziri was on my RUPL team when I won RUPL, and that was in 2018. So, uh, AFO was actually on the opposite team in finals that year. Uh, I beat Finn in semifinals. So, yeah, so this is really people that, that I've known for a long time. I think there's like two players on the team that I haven't uh, teamed up with before. Which is kind of nuts if you think about it, but but it also sort of uh, because yeah, I usually have my kind of picks and I've been I've done so many drafts that it's expected a little bit more, but every manager has those and this kind of s- s- brought in the issue of you know new players having some issue in getting in and yeah, but when you have managers like me or Ajna, who've been around for so long, they know exactly the kind of player that they trust. So it's even if you want to give spot to new players, when everyone is that experienced, has been on Smogon for that long, it ends up playing against new players a little bit, which is unfortunate. And again, this is something that we hope the new tour will help, will help uh, alleviate the issue. Yeah. Are you GL? Go Rug League! Woo! Yeah, exactly. Um, Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay. Um, so now kind of just wrapping up the kind of draft comments. Um, 
is there anything like kind of closing comments you want to make uh, about the draft, um, how it went, just like, or about RUPL as as like a whole? What, what I'm honestly hoping for a little bit is um, actually play in the older gens. Uh, I know uh, a lot of people are talking about SV, especially not being at the best of time in regards to balance. Um, I think that's an SV issue that's going to be extremely difficult to change because personally, I think the main issue with SV is always going to be that Terra stayed the way it was on the cartridge. We did nothing to change it. And ultimately, as long as that stays, we kind of have to deal with the fact that Terra months are going to be super silly. And I don't think it matters much if you just ban one or two great abusers. It's just the mechanic in general is always going to be outstanding in a way that's difficult to re to replicate. With, um, but yeah, when it comes to Sword and Shield, it, it hasn't had the greatest reputation. I'm kind of forced to play it a little bit. So we'll see. Um, but there's been, um, there's some player that came back to, in our to IPL to play it. Uh, some players that have been very good uh, in the gen who are still kind of pushing it. So maybe we get some interesting stuff there. Uh, SM has been on a sort of lull as well. Um, and yes, I promise that after our UPL, I will post something about that thing. Like, I promise. I promise. It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, yeah, as, same with Oras and also Black and White, because I'm interested in Black and White a little bit because Gold Cat retained himself, and I know he really loves that gem. So we'll see. Cause does he keep his great record? Does he keep innovating the tier? Because now you see a lot of people that have gold cat teams in black and white, which are so different than what you used to be. Like you don't really see stuff like Augustal or the classic old offense anymore, which I think is really neat because it's a very deep meta game, despite all the nonsense I said about it in the in the casting. So yeah, this is what actually interests me the most. And also personally, because I play it so right now, the BO3 slot, um, everyone is so incredibly good in that slot. Like I think on the, v, on the, on the PR, I have to be last. Like it's not even close. Um, so I'm really interested to see how that goes because the competition is so, so insane in that slot. And I kind of love it. Like it's one of the best like looking slots I've seen in uh, RUPL and ever. So I, I really hope it, it, it delivers and we actually have like great quality play, especially going into our Europe and as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think really across the board, this RUPL, and we've heard this from a couple other managers at this point, uh, just kind of the talent pool is is so deep that a lot of these spots are hard to pick clear favorites for uh, for anyone. So yeah, I mean, me oh, too yeah. personally. Yeah, for sure. yeah, very excited to see kind of uh, just how things pan out. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean that that's about everything I had for uh, kind of you know questions pertaining to draft and like just looking towards the future. Are there any you know closing comments from you, Evie, or you, Oath, uh, just about like yeah, just about anything really before we uh we call it. Um, thank you all for being here. Actually, like because maybe I just feel old now because, like I said, it's almost going into five years of being RUTL. But seeing the community like this now and seeing so many new people involved is always great to see. Um, We've been some through some rough times when I've been a retail, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but this is about the best I've seen the community in a long time. And I and I know Feli agrees. Even though yeah, sure we can rant about some specific uh, tearing calls coming from some people, like you know, that that's completely normal. And but at the same time that these discussions happen and it's not just oh yeah, that thing's broken, let's just vote on it to ban and like 10 people show up like that's not happening now and that's really nice to see and um also uh as my last statement i have to say it but i don't think a girl has ever said oh philly burn 
<laughs> Definitely spiked on the recording. That was crazy. <laughs> I'm just gonna laugh at that. That's that's all because I think that's all that's needed. But um, no, this no, this is. Um, I agree with you. I mean, it's just it's the community feels like really really strong right now, and I want it to you know stay that way for as long as it possibly can you know i mean people are coming in they're enjoying the meta and you know it's and like i'm it's tours like this that you know it it, it just it makes it even that much more fun you know and you know and i want to just see the community continue to thrive all right cool um well with that uh thank you too oath uh, Evie, for, you know, kind of taking the time out of your day to just sit down and do this interview. Um, thank you to everyone who has listened to, you know, one of these or all of these interviews so far. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be a, a good RUPL with, with any luck.